I took it out. There it goes. Got it. Okay. It's good. Turning. Oh yeah, she's tip top. Most important. You okay? That's good. <laughs> What's that? We're good. It missed the donuts. I think this car is a bad influence on my trailer. I've got an idea for a project. It's gonna require a cheap car with a manual transmission. This thing was free, which is pretty cheap. And I think it still meets the minimum legal requirements to be considered a car. There is a problem though. It's 41 years old and it hasn't run or moved for about eight years. I'm not concerned though, because under the hood, are 52 of Rudolph Diesel's fire-breathing horses. Just drink in that 1970s styling. This is a 1982 Volkswagen Rabbit. I think in Europe these are all golfs, but here in the States the four-door is a Rabbit, the two-door is a Dasher, and the convertible is a Cabriolet, or something like that. You can hear the pedants frantically typing in the comment section. There's the heart of the beast, a 52 horsepower, single overhead cam diesel engine. Some kind of a manual transmission, not sure if it's a four speed or a five speed. And it's got these horrible North American low speed bumpers, 13 inch tires. Just imagine a world where selling this car in the US was a viable option. What a time to be alive. It does have some slight damage to the tailgate and the glass is broken out. But otherwise, I mean, she's pretty much mint. Got that trailer hitch there. Check out the interior. I mean, they just don't get much nicer than that. Oh, 
this thing is sweet. <laughs> oh, I love it. I mean, this has got to be the absolute high water mark for German automotive engineering. I mean, how does it get any better than this? So my, my grandpa had this car, I think he bought it new, and my brother drove it until about 2015, 16, somewhere in there. It ran when parked. He said the only reason he parked it is the injection pump was leaking fuel. And if he parked it for a leak, it must be leaking really bad. So we should be able to get it to run, but we're gonna have to do some work on the pump once we, once we get it running. I'm so confident that I'm not even gonna say if. I don't know, should we just jump right in and see if it'll start? I mean, I've watched a lot of Will It Run videos. I feel like there's a, a minimum amount of yakking that's required before you can turn any wrenches. I don't wanna break the rules. I guess, let's get to it. Got a spare starter here. Which we're probably gonna need. We tried cranking it over and it really cranks slow. Let me find a battery, maybe some terminals. We'll get her hooked up and we'll see what happens. Yeah, if we can get it to crank, I bet it'll start. Well, place your bets. I'm sure it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. She's a little crusty. No worries. So this is a group 42 battery, which I definitely don't have. But I've got this weird group 35. That might work. Yeah, it's probably gonna be too tall. All right, let me scrounge around here. The only one I have that's shorter is a side terminal. And that's not gonna work. Doesn't even work in GMs. Yeah, shoot, everything's gonna be too short now. <sighs> let me scrounge some more. I got a 65. But the terminals are on the wrong end. So that's not gonna work. Uh, I don't know. Just kind of cheat it over. No. Man, I did not want to buy a battery for this thing. Uh, I don't get it. Why are there so many kinds of batteries? Like, why does there need to be more than about three or four group sizes? That'll work. What is that, 94 GM special? Okay, grab one of these. Mortski approved repair terminals. I hate these things, but what are you gonna do? Oh, that's gone forever. Okay, I'm gonna assume that that needs to go there. And of course that needs to go there. A little crusty, but we don't have any wire to spare, so can't cut it off. All right, we'll just jam it on there. Then Mortsky says you're supposed to put these on upside down, which I have not found to make any difference. Good thing is the patina on this battery matches the rest of the vehicle. Okay. I don't see any sparks or flames. What's that? Oh, cruise control? Man, this thing is deluxe. Where is the dipstick? I don't have any idea. Oh yeah, he, he told me about this. I think... <laughs> Hang on, you're gonna love this. Found it. The dipstick is, uh, it's removable and appropriately rusty. 
So you gotta jam it in until the, uh, the tape lines up with the top of the tube, apparently. Right there. Oh, look at that. All kinds of oil. And then we'll put our little cap back on. Yeah, that's probably full of critters. Well, let's see if it'll crank first. In case you were wondering, it smells wonderful in here. All right, clutch pedal down. I think we're in neutral. I got nothing. Oh, wait, he told me about this. Hang on. Uh, let's see, you got to pull this gizmo out, which is like a, I don't know what it is. It's kind of like a choke, I guess. And then this is your start button, which does nothing. Starter motor is right there. We'll hook up the switch. there. We're going to give her the old Fonzie treatment here. Is it locked up? Is that the problem? Oh, I know we had it cranking. Got a 17 millimeter on the crankshaft. No, that's not it. Compression. Pretty good compression. Okay, that's not the problem. I think our starter is junk. Yeah, let's just make sure we're not getting some weird voltage drop. Come on. Okay. Nope, I don't think so. Alright, well. I'm gonna pull that starter out of there. Doesn't look too awful bad, except for this big honking bolt that comes in from the. Well, that comes in from the back side, so we should be okay. Exactly sure why I didn't move it back about 20 feet and put it on the lift. That's okay. Keeps me limber. There it is. That might be the easiest starter I've ever changed. So do we bench test this one or we just put it in and cross our fingers? Alright, forget it. It's going to have one bolt in it for right now. So I can get it up on the lift. What a pain in the ass. There's a bracket on the back side here. I guess it's got nuts welded onto it or something. It must have shifted. Anyway, whatever. One bolt will hold it for now. Okay, let's put back on. What's she do now? That's a lot better. All right, let me uh, turn on the key. <laughs> oh, it's gonna go for sure.
Oh, why did it go to full throttle? That was pretty sketchy. I don't know, is the rack stuck or something? I guess we'll try it again. We'll turn off that uh, choke thing. I don't know, how do we kill it if we, uh, if we have to? Pull the battery cable, I guess? Give her a little shot of ether. I don't think we're gonna hurt it. Oh, pop this guy off. Oh, well, that's a fantastic design. <laughs> How are you supposed to get the uh, the air filter out? Too bad. Not really. Not sure it was doing a whole lot of good, but at least it had a filter in it. We're dangerously low on ether. Give her a shot though. <laughs> oh, is it running on? Ether only? Probably. pressure gauge. I don't see any lights.
it's a little tight. Oh. Amongst other complaints, <laughs> I feel like it's idling kind of high. All right. I don't know if I have reverse. So you gotta push down on the knob on these BWs. And it should be, should be over there somewhere maybe. I think. Yeah, we got her. There's vague and then there's this shifter. All right, let's, let's go. Does it have any brakes? I don't know. Oh, we got no steering. <laughs> Well, that could be a problem. Steering is locked up. I know it doesn't have power steering, I don't think. That brakes? No, of course not. We have no brakes. No brakes at all. All right, well, let's go for a drive. Oh, nope. Oh, don't hit the truck. Oh, I have no steering and no brakes. Oh, I can't steer it at all. There we go. All right, can we get past the truck? Oh yeah, we're good. Beautiful, she's tip top. Take her to town. Yeah, there we go. Can we do a gear change? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. in the shop without destroying a customer's vehicle or crashing it into the back wall. All right. Perfect. Will it start back up? Like we parked it yesterday. Okay. Needs brakes. Interior could use a little bit of a tune-up. Otherwise, I think she's ready to go. Well, surprisingly, it had some brake fluid in it. That's had in the past tense. Look how good this car is. It fixed itself. Tires holding air. Kind of hard to believe that the brake lines would rot out with the 4.5 inches of advertised ground clearance. But you know how specs are. Mostly lies. Do you think it'll start? Man, that interior. Anyway, let's not worry about that. Oh, God. Dang. A little bit cold today. Let's see. We'll pull out the choke that's not a choke. And maybe give her a little, a little pedal. Oh, it's so good. this thing. Pretty sure the alternator is not working, but you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's a minor detail. Here we go. Oh yeah, no steering. Oh. There we go. She likes to lock up on me. been known to crash into the back wall of the shop so take it a little bit easy here oh yeah wow this thing's so good 
Let's do a quick structural integrity test. I don't know, I didn't hear any weird creaking or groaning. All right. If you thought the top side was good, you ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Disc brakes. It's kind of hard to believe. Anyway, not too bad up here. There's that starter bolt that we're definitely going to install. Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Uh, this, this section here maybe isn't quite so good. Uh, like especially this section or uh, that section or really this section. I mean, I'm not really sure what's holding the floor in. Looks like one, two, three, four, five custom exhaust hangers. Check out the rear suspension. It's just a solid beam. <laughs> Drum brakes. Oh man, is that beam attached to anything? Not really. Well, there's our, our bad brake line, zuh. I doubt the rear brakes are really doing anything anyway. Maybe we just pull a Mortski and cap those off. I mean, this thing can't go back on the road anyway. Fuel tank looks really good. In fact, I don't think it's leaking at all. Not sure what's holding it in. But I mean, what's worse that can happen? It just drops down onto the exhaust, sits on the rear axle. Can't come out of there. Okay. Well, fuel lines look good. I think all we gotta do is just tie into those brake lines. What's our bleeding situation? Ooh, yeah, I bet those will come right out. Okay, let's go find some compression fittings. Okay, we'll get rid of the old snipper root. And then it'll probably just break off. about seven sixteenths. Oh no. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Should have seen that coming. All right. I'll have to hold it backwards with the Knipex, which everyone tells me doesn't work, but it does work. There, can we get this one out? Oh no. Double structural failure. Who would have thought? It's okay. It's not like that supports the rear axle or anything. <laughs> I think we're gonna need one, two, three, four of those. two of those. I better order some more because that's the last two. In case you were wondering, they never stop dripping until after you flare the end. I spoke too soon. Maybe it's done dripping. Well, it must 
be a straight pipe Peterbilt. Pulling a stock trailer. Oh, log trailer. Very nice. Okay, I got distracted 92 times. Apparently, I was making brake lines. Looks like I must have been done. So, yeah, I reused the original nuts. You know, they're rusted and rounded off, but they'll still work. So we got metric bubble flare on this end, and then regular American Standard inverted flare on the other end. Which I can do with my handy dandy, what is this thing, Robin Air? Master Cool, Master Cool, crimping tool. Well, I think I failed at measuring here. Yeah, one's too short and one's too long. So this is going to be kind of a hack job, which is a bummer, because we're probably not going to get that first place trophy at Pebble Beach. But I think it'll work. We might have to cross these lines, hook the uh, left to the right and vice versa, which I don't think this thing has any kind of anti-lock brakes, so that surely won't matter. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. That was pretty stupid. So I obviously <laughs> measured to the wrong line or something, I don't know. Oh man, I broke the tab. Hard to believe. Okay, so if I was smart, I'd probably just tuck that on the other side. It's amazing to me that the brake lines can be completely rotted out here, but they're like brand new over here. I really don't want to fight with the bleeders because I'm going to lose that fight. So I think what we're going to do, I'll do a little hack here and we'll try to just bleed it right at the uh, connection to the hose. Won't be perfect, but, you know, you know. I don't know, that, that's a booster there, right? So it's gotta have power brakes. No power steering. Ooh, that is, that is quite nasty. Oh well, put the screen back in so we don't have to see it. Careful, careful. Never get that right. Oh, dang it. <laughs> the screen's so plugged up it won't go in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> How much more can we spill? I mean, I can get a funnel, but I'd have to turn around and take three or four steps. So, thirsty. Okay. Put our screen back in. I'm gonna give the brake pedal a few pumps and then we'll let gravity do, uh, do the work for us. Oh, I'll be jiggered. That actually worked. Okay, we're probably gonna have to do that a few times, but that's the general idea. Nothing on the other side yet. Takes a while. We still don't have even the slightest whiff of brakes. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> so, let's hook up the power bleeder. Let's see if we can shove some more brake fluid through it. Hopefully we don't pop the reservoir off the top of the master cylinder. You're never going to believe this, because I don't believe it, but the right side brake bleeder is loose. And it's got a bunch of air in it, which is a good sign. Not so lucky on the left side bleeder. 
Yeah, it's just gonna twist off. Look how flat spotted these tires are. <laughs> Yeehaw! Well, the good news is, well, good enough news anyway, we have sort of a break. I'm gonna go ahead and call this a complete success. I should probably tie these lines up, but I think they're stronger than anything I have to attach them to. In fact, they might be the only thing holding the floor up. So let's move on. Something's majorly wrong with this shifter. Now there's the reverse interlock deal. So that's what you have to push down to get the lever over far enough to get into reverse. Uh, but something up here is, is not right. Oh, <laughs> think I see it. Now uh, we've got a bushing that's completely gone. Okay. Oh, oh yeah, that's not good. Pretty sure that lever is supposed to be keyed to that shaft. And it is not. So, <laughs> yeah, what can we do about that? Probably just weld it up. What about the other linkages? So it's got this kind of Rube Goldberg mechanism here. Oh, look how close those brake lines are to that axle shaft. Yeah, it'll self-correct. Uh, yeah, front wheel drive car shifter is always pretty complex. Yeah, that thing's pretty, pretty clapped out too. Okay, well, I think this is the, the major problem right here. I wonder if we can get parts for that. Actually, you know what? I think I know where there are some parts for that. Come on. Well, we haven't been down here for a while. Place looks about the same. Except for the loader's gone. My brother came and grabbed it. Forklift's still here, still runs good. Tires are a little flat. Go find a bunny pup. There's lots of them in here. It's like the Alice Chalmers grader is still there. And the old Inslee. We took the boom off, but it's still there. Old backhoe truck. But we're here for this guy. I don't know if it has an engine or not. Uh, let's see. There we go. Oh yeah. She's just mint. Okay, does the hood latch still work? I don't even see it. No steering column, no instrument cluster. Heater box is out. Oh, it's got good seats though. Oh, this one's an 83. I don't know how to get the hood open. It does have an engine. Well, son of a diddly. Oh, well, there's how the critters were getting in. Okay. I didn't remember it having an engine. No radiator. That's a different alternator. Okay, well, I don't know. Okay, I think that engine might be locked up, but it does have an injection pump, which we could probably just swap right onto ours if ours is leaking. What else we got down here? So this is a two-door, which I guess makes it a dasher. Oh, we got lots of body parts over there. I think there's an extra tailgate. This whole crate here is full of VW parts, but they've been sitting outside for who knows how long. Oh, well, there's a whole engine block. There's a whole transmission. Half shafts, intakes. 
rear view mirrors, parking brake, levers, anything you can think of is here. Some of it's still pretty decent. Look, it was all labeled. Overstock, I don't know. Well, that tailgate's no good, but there's a yellow one there that might be. Stay off the road. All right, this engine is seized up, solid, which I'm sure is why it's here. Just like that engine and that engine and that engine and probably that engine and four or five other random engine blocks that are laying around down here. All this stuff was destined for the melting pot when they, when they diverted it to here. Anyway, I think we've got some parts we can salvage. Mortsky tells me that these diesel VWs have a cult following and I'm sitting on a jackpot here. I don't think that's true, but stranger things have happened. There's a complete exhaust system there. It looks better than ours. We got a hood, a couple five doors, seven doors, not rusty. Nice patina, glass is good. We've got some shift linkages, an injection pump, and a very tired dog. Not too bad of a job. This car's in a lot better shape. I mean, it's still rusty, but nothing like the one we're working on. And check it out, I found an original scissor jack, brand new, in that wooden crate right there. Check out these brake rotors. Not even vented. I hear you, pup. All right, let's four wheel out of here. Place is a jungle. That's okay, you can't stop a RAV4. Oh, we hit something big. I think we're clear. We didn't need that anyway. I'm not sure this is really an improvement. Uh, that's pretty loose. That's pretty broken. That's pretty worn. I don't know, let's get the other stuff out of there and we'll kind of compare. <laughs> that shouldn't be loose. Oh well. Yeah, so it should be a nice tight fit. Okay, well let me, I guess let me clean this stuff up. See this bushing at the top on this one's no good. We may end up having to make some bushings. Or, you know, God forbid we could buy the kit, but I think it costs like $20. Yeah, those bushings are just gone. Okay, well, salvaging those parts might have been a waste of time. Surprisingly, it's hard to find parts for a 41-year-old obscure German-made subcompact car. I couldn't find a complete shifter rebuild kit anywhere. Uh, FCP Euro had a couple of the parts, a couple other places had other parts, but nobody had a complete kit except for some shady direct from China companies. So we're going to cobble this together. Uh, the big thing we need is bushings, and rather than buy them, I decided to just make my own with a 3D printer. So I modeled these up in CAD, printed them with PETG resin or filament or whatever you want to call it. Uh, the problem is I only had really had one complete original bushing that I could reference. The rest of them, I think are made of urethane and they just, they just crumbled. So I used a tried and true engineering design principle called guessing, and we're gonna see if it works. So I've got these guys here that should press into this bracket. I, I designed these retention, kind of retention features in, 
they're probably a little too aggressive, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> it's not looking good. It would have worked. I'm telling you, it would have worked. If only I hadn't installed the bushings backwards. Yeah, they're supposed to press in from this side. So I pushed them out, tried to push them in the other way, broke them, crushed them. It's no good. This one, I think is fine. These two, I mean, it would work, but it could be better and uh, you know we definitely need perfection on this 1982 Volkswagen Rabbit so I printed up some new ones slightly tweaked let's uh, shove these out and shove these new ones in I guess that's why they used urethane it doesn't really uh, doesn't really pop in there it just kind of shears off the retention feature and Uh, I don't know. I guess it'll work. There's a groove, well, two grooves inside that sleeve. See, it just doesn't work quite the way I think it should. That one's good. That one's a little loose. I don't know, let's quit while we're ahead. It's good enough for what we're doing. Well, I can't think of a better way to fix this than just cutting them both in half and welding the good parts together. I guess worst case scenario, we'll, we'll ruin both of them. Just about out of gas. Doesn't weld very well. Of course, every time I do something like this, I get comment after comment about how you shouldn't be quenching the weld because you're going to make it hard and brittle. Fellas, that ain't how metallurgy works. To make something hard, you got to have carbon. There's not enough carbon in this thing to ever get hard unless we add carbon to it. That's why you can't make a knife out of mild steel. It is slightly porous and nowhere near straight. But that's okay. It needs to match the rest of the car. We don't want it to be too good. Not bad. We'll reinstall our heat shield. Keep all those diesel horses from burning up our new bushing. That thing is good. Okay, I guess that's it. So there's first. There's third. There's fifth. I don't know, I guess it's better. There's third. Maybe that's reverse. That's first. That's second. That's third. That's fourth. I think that's fifth. Here's a fun little fact. Those two are not the same length. Don't know why. Is it because the other car is a four speed and not a five speed? I don't know. We're gonna put this one back in. No wonder I was having so much trouble shifting into fifth gear.